formula. It's a main formula. We're going to say control shift down for RAND data one, enter 49. Let's add some decimals to get a little bit more precise home tab number group decimalizing it. And then let's do the same thing. This time, let's just copy it over. If I just copy it over like so, double click on it to double check it. And it is picking up the correct data there. So that looks good. Let's do the standard deviation for the sample. Standard deviation for the S, S T D E V dot S sample tab. Selecting the data, control shift down for RAND one data and enter. Decimalizing home tab number group, decimalize. Copying it to the right. So we do the same thing for RAND data set number two. So there it is. Double click, double check and it's done what it, what it needs to do. All right, note, we could look at this and say, what if I made a histogram of this data sets to see if they look similar? So I could say control shift down and then control backspace, insert, and let's go to the charts and let's make a histogram of this. Histogram for RAND data set number one looks like this randomly generated buckets this is going to be for rand one so it made our buckets and it listed the numbers that are how many times we had a number between 1 and 18 18 35 35 52 and if we were to approximate this with some kind of curve or formula it's going to approximate a straight line because this is going to go towards a uniform distribution because we chose randomly generated numbers so let's let's do it for, as opposed to a bell-shaped distribution, right? It's more of like it's gonna go towards, as we have more data, it's gonna tend towards a uniform distribution or straight line. Let's go to the, the RAN2 and do the same thing, selecting all this data con and uh, I hit control backspace and then insert, chart, histogram, boom, next one. And this is gonna be RAN2. Two, so it looks very similar. See, so see, you'd say, okay, this one looks like it's going to be a uniform kind of distribution too. It's got kind of a, a little bit unusual look here that you know it's tapered off a lot on the ninety-seven to one thirteen, which is interesting. But it should still be because we use we use randomly generated numbers. The more numbers that we produce, it would tend towards a straight line. So they look kind of similar like that. But still, you would think they might not have a correlation because there's, there, there's, or at least not a high correlation because there's nothing really tying these two together other than they're randomly generated from one to a hundred. So let's, let's say, okay, let's make this one uh, a little bit larger. Let's make this cell a little larger and I'll make this one smaller so it fits in there, fits in the spot there put everything in its place it needs to go where it needs to go and then i can choose these two control shift down and uh control backspace and do a scatter plot between them insert charts let's do a scatter plot boom looks like that so now we're scattering these i'm going to delete the top one and this is the random numbers and so now i'm going to say let's hit the plus button up top and label them so i'm going to put the axis labels and by default if i go to the first let's go to the x-axis first i usually think about that first the x-axis is the one on the left so this is the random one data the y-axis is the one on the right so this is equal to the random two uh data so there's our, there's our correlation. And you can see if I was to try to draw a regression line between them or in here, we could say plus button trend line. And you could see it's, it's got a low negative correlation to it. So I can say if I add my formula, there's the formula for the line. And then I can say, let's make sure I'm back on the trend line. I'm going to say plus trend line options i'm bucket i like to make my line solid and orange a solid orange line that's solid man that's solid so there we have it so you can see it's has a low 
you know, negative correlation for, for the two that have been randomly generated between one and 100. Now, you could also say, well, what if I wanted to put, because we might not know, of course, what's, we don't, we don't know what, what the causal factor would be, which should be on the X and which should be on the Y, because really they're not related other than picking random numbers between one and 100. So if I select these two and control back and I want to put RAND2 on the X axis, I can go to the insert. I can go into the charts, scatter plot, scatter. There's a scattered plot out there and to do something we're going to say plus button let's do the axis titles this time i want the x axis to be rand 2 and i want the y axis to be the rand 1 which is backwards because by default excel will always plot the one on the left on the x so how can i switch the two if i don't want to rearrange the actual columns we can go into the chart design the data we can go into our RAND data and edit it. And then this is the X values. I'm gonna delete these and say that delete that. And this was RAND1. We want it to be RAND2 info, yo. And then, okay. And then this one, I'm gonna delete that and say this needs to be the data for the rand one so we switched the x's and the y's hopefully if i did that properly and so i'm going to say okay and okay and so now we've got our scatter plot which looks very similar still negative negative well that's the wrong one negatively correlated put that right back where it goes and then it's still going to be negatively correlated so if i add the trend line trend line